boy yeah. Luke. Yeah, I guess it's right. I'm doing good. Just got off work from the wide man and had a great day with the kids and uh, I'm very excited about my job. Get to work with the community. Some of the guys that I've been uh, volunteering up at the wide for the last two years and then I get to work there and work with them. They respect me and hey man, I had a great day and come out and join the wide. 18 of Broadway, it's a good community of work, people working there, it's diverse, and they're showing much love in our man. So come back to the Y, 18 of Broadway, and support our West End Y. We got one of the best Ys in, in the Louisville, in Indiana, so come over, swim, shoot ball with us, work out. And we got yoga, um, aerobics, or water, exercise, just come and join us. Okay, well that sounds good, and I want to say that we were blessed today to uh, be able to go to the bowling alley with the kids, Sister Juanita and Michon. And may God bless you, Marie. Uh, I wish that you all could have seen the young people as they climbed on the new Bishop bus. Yes, Their sir. eyes got bright and those, uh, the seats on the, on the Bishop's bus, uh, they recline like airplanes. Oh, man. Yeah, they're like airplane seats. And uh, I tell you, it's beautiful. Those tears got on. They thought they was on a plane. Mm -hmm. Amen. Especially it's nice like bus. a plane. Yeah, it's not like Smokey and the Jumping Hard Dog. You know, right? <laughs> and the Shitty Shitty Boom Boom. You know what they call that other man. Amen. But we had our first trip. And our first trip was to Newburgh. Right. It's your home. <laughs> It's amazing yeah. how, you know, it, straight off the bat that you have in the community <laughs> with your bus. Yeah. And that means a lot to me and everybody around you because a lot of people say they're going to help people and they don't. But, you know, you ain't had a bus a week and you're already helping people. Would, yeah. And you're already helping the youth. You're helping your church. You're helping the community. And, you know, that's much love, Bishop. And I appreciate it. And I hope everybody else appreciate it. Well, i tell you what the police did when uh, they had not had any blacks from the West End. To come, they bowl every uh, second Monday of the week, and they hadn't been having participation. So the boss of Louisville and the bishop table said, "Hey, instead of uh, them waiting on, while we waiting on them, let's extend our hand." And so I went around the neighborhood and got children, put them on the bus, and took them out there to the uh, bowling alley. And it was definitely good. Even Mama Shirley. Oh, man. Amen. Mama Shirley, I looked up. She now had on bowling shoes. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know. Y'all let her bow? Yeah, I, mean, I didn't see it. <laughs> you said I didn't see it. years old, but it was good. I want to say Officer Bradley yeah. definitely, definitely has outstretched his arm to the community. And we want to say it. God bless you. And we want to say to our chief, uh, also, we thank you for... Amen. Supporting yes, uh, these types of events. But I want to warn Negroes that get in high positions. Amen. I uh, sit back sometimes, you just look, and you see folk, once they get a pencil behind their ear, mm -hmm. they really think they hot stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, blacks that you done marched on, you done marched for to get them the job. Amen. And you have, uh, you know, we went to hell. Some right. people got spit on right. for them to get in those positions and once they get in those high positions, I looked at an officer that was in a very high position uh, and uh, how disdain she was with uh, Shirley, you know, older person, older black woman and 
how mm-hmm. she didn't have that she didn't have that kind spirit mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and I think you know because she is in a position of authority uh, that she's not using that to help yeah but sometimes see, you have yeah. to watch and hey, when you're in positions like that, you have to watch what you say and do around people because you have people watching you. So sometimes people just uh, maybe just keep it quiet and keep it, you know, on the low because they got so much pe- too many people looking at them, ready to say, oh, she ain't this or she ain't that. Or, you know, so sometimes people just like, just be quiet, man, and just treat people just generous, but don't say too much. <laughs> but these, you know, that's good. Well, but you don't be, you never be mean, and you never be right. uh, disrespect. I don't care how, you know, uh, one thing that I just, just uh, admire that uh, I've seen Pastor uh, Arkin down there with the protesters, and they were down there eating chicken with their fingers, and, <laughs> and you could smell weed, oh, and big, but he was right there, right. amen, even, right there every evening bringing them food. And you know, uh, you know, uh, sometimes they were not always kind, mm-hmm. amen. But he didn't let his position as a pastor mm-hmm. even stop him from being nice. Mm-hmm. And you never, and so uh, uh, we have to, you know, the higher you go, it seems like the more humble. I look at Corey, Corey out there at, uh, <laughs> at the Brennan Avenue, I was sitting down at a funeral, and all of a sudden he comes with a plate. Mm-hmm. A uh, plate of food, I mean, chicken, macaroni, and cheese, you know, and uh, everything. And uh, I said, hey, how you doing, Pastor? He said, Bishop, this is for you. I fixed That's it for up. you. I said, what? I said, no, I know you're lying. I know. He said, no, Bishop. <laughs> hey, man, I know you got to get out of here and go to your next trip. Corey Shaw, right. out of all those people, and he said, I fixed a plate for you. Because okay. I knew that you, y'all fixed your plate. And Pastor, uh, Pastor Cosby Great with God, and when I got the bus, he said, Bishop, you know we're going to use that bus. I right. said, come on, man. He said, yeah, we, didn't we use the chicken, right. chili, bang, bang right. bus? Yeah. Didn't we use the, yes, didn't right. we use the smoky? But you know, a lot of black men feel a certain way when another black man do something yeah. for them. Yes. And for you to not to have that negativity cause a man it break, brought it you a break. plate. It probably yeah, because you, you probably use a women bring you food. I am. I'm not used to no man bring me no plate. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I mean, I don't remember the last time a man made me a plate or brought me a plate, yeah. you know. But, you know, for you to show the humbleness, show him love as, you know, as a pastor and accept it, that means a lot as a person. You know what? I'm looking at uh, the Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for yes, they shall obtain Mercy. Did y'all see that? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And so I just think you never, somebody just said, hey, you never judge, Natasha. People are quick to judge you. Amen. But you still got to be be, be uh, loving and be forgiving. And that's what Jesus said. You know, when he was he eating with some of the guys, and I noticed that as he was eating with the disciples, he says, one of you are going to betray me. Oh, uh, you said that in church yesterday. Uh, he said, one of you. So they was eating, you know, they drank wine, you know, mm-hmm. passing the bottle and eating the bread. And he just came out. All, all 12 of them was there. Right. And he said, you know what? One of you are going to betray me. Mm-hmm. And all of them, all of them said, Lord, is it I? And I heard Pastor August say, you know, Bishop, that means if all of them said, is it I, all of them had the potential of being the one that would do it. Right. I all of them doing it. I thought I thought of doing it. They might have they, thought about they, doing it before he said it. He said, what are you, and all of them said, Lord, is it I, is it I, is it I, is it I, and he didn't ask it, but you know, y'all, all of us have the potential of betraying Jesus. All of us got something in us that would possibly betray Jesus. Some of us do it, amen, uh, even without even knowing it. Right. Amen. When we got a choice whether to go to UofL game or uh, whether to go to the church at Sunday, uh, amen. It was, we all do it. But listen, he says, he didn't say who it was, mm-hmm. but he did say, 
is the one who's dipping his finger in the bread. Uh, this is the one. I don't know if it's the one that was drinking the Manischewitz, uh, if it was the one that was eating the Dino's chicken. Right. I don't know which one. Dino chicken. It was yeah. the one that was eating the Dino's chicken. <laughs> He's in the Dino's chicken. <laughs> 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 he's in the high spike. Yeah, he couldn't handle it. <laughs> Whoever it was, and it was Judas, right. he says he's the one. And it would be better, really, if he had never been born. Uh, but he says, but whatever you do, go do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, go do it. Go do it. Yeah. He says, uh, uh, we're going to be offended. Mm -hmm. We're going to be offended. But woe to the one who do the offending. Yes, and I read in Psalms 37, he says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and they shall wither as the green herb. And sometimes you see folk that rise high and be mean and naughty. Yeah, I've seen them rise and spread themselves. That's what... The psalmist says, I've seen the wicked in great power spreading themselves like a green bay tree. Yeah, you know what? But yet, what happened to them? They pass away, and you and they ain't not. They, they're not no more. You see folk to be riding high, they pass by you, won't give you no ride. Amen. Look down on folk at at. Uh, you know, at the service thing, you mean you're going to give him a dollar? You know you're going to... He says, i seen them, Troy. i seen the wicked in great power. Some of these big, some of these big high rollers. They got those big chains. They got gold. And they, you know, man, they throwing dollar bills to you and won't speak. You have seen big dope dealers. They be all, but listen, but then all of a sudden, you see them in prison. Right. And they be... Amen. I say they get home, but down God bring them back down to reality. You know what I'm saying? And once you treat people bad, and then once you making you treating them bad, God break you back down and put you back at the same playing field with them. You done seen those yeah, I done seen it then, and, and, and them guys, and then the people you treat them bad, they above you now. Oh. And a lot of them don't even treat you bad. No, even though you treated them bad, they treat treat you with love. So that make you more humble when they damn because they were like, man, that's the same person I talked about. Okay. But you like you was talking about earlier, I always feel like it's always somebody around you who wants your position. And it could be a friend, it could be a brother in law, it could be a cousin, it's, but it's always somebody looking at you like, Man, I want this spot. And they envy you. And you have That's to even in the dope world. In the, it's just in, in the, the regular world. world. My Never. granddad used to always tell me, Watch who you sit down and eat food with at the table. Watch who you sit and talk to and eat at the table with. And watch who you show your life to and tell your personal business to because people, it's just people, you know, especially these days, everybody out using people, man. Ain't nobody genuine like when we grew up. Nobody's genuine with friends. Nobody genuine with care about you no more. They just worry about what you can do for them today. It was a cold back in there. Yeah. They, even the dope folk and the people on the corner, there was a cold. There was some loyalty and uh, there was some commitment to one another. Right. But this the scripture says what? He says, I've seen the wicked spreading themselves with great power like a green bay tree, yet they pass away, and you look for them, and they cannot be found. He said, where's, where's the man that, you know, he had all that, mm -hmm. oh, man, you know, the one that rolled around in that grave, big thing. They had their face got their shame. Where are they? They done, they done got busted, they down. Amen. So people have to rebuke any jealousy, haters, yeah. amen. You got to put on the whole arm of God right. so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, you better put on some coats and some long johns. What you say? <laughs> so we can stand this cold weather because it went down. Let's check the weather right here. Hey, what you got to say? Your Wave 3 new storm checking team forecast. After some late day sunshine, clouds will roll back into the area overnight tonight. Even a little patchy fog as winds die down. 34 for the overnight low. Tuesday brings back a few rounds of light rain showers, both Dr. early Dr. and again late today. 49 for the high. Wednesday's the cool day. Highs in the mid 40s. From the Wave Storm Tracking Team, I'm Kevin Hart.
All right, Dr. King. Amen. Two people died. One was a little girl. I don't know if we got in the news thing on the bar uh, this morning. Uh, two people were bought out that died right there in the bar on 1100 Cesar Avenue. And one was taken to the hospital. And we definitely want to keep our prayers for them. And then there were five people this weekend that were killed. Five that were shot. Oh, they were just shooting people all over. Amen. Uh, so um, we definitely, amen, Any, any, anyone, amen, that can bless us, amen, say that I'm black. You know, Dr. King, amen, he knew. He knew what he was. Listen. Amen. One says, I am black and I'm proud. Mm -hmm. Amen. I definitely want you all to know that we have to definitely uh, deal with these issues of this killing. And uh, we are here to tell you tonight. Listen to this. Believe in yourself and believe that you're somebody. As I said to the group last night, Nobody else can do this for us. No document can do this for us. No Lincolnian Emancipation Proclamation can do this for us. No Kennesonian or Johnsonian Civil Rights Bill can do this for us. If the Negro is to be free, he must move down into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with a pen and ink of self-asserted manhood his own emancipation proclamation. Don't let anybody take your manhood. Mm -mm -mm. Be proud of our heritage. As somebody said earlier tonight, we don't have anything to be ashamed of. Somebody told a lie one day. They couched it in language. They made everything black, ugly, and evil. Mm -hmm. Look in your dictionary and see yeah. the synonyms of the word black. Black. Everything black is evil. It's always something degrading mm -hmm. and low and sinister. Look at the word white. It's always something pure. Yeah. High and mm -hmm. But I want to get the language right tonight. Yeah. I want to get the language so right that everybody here will cry out, Yes, I'm black, I'm proud of it, I'm black and beautiful. Seven one one two four zero five seven one one two four zero. Thank you so much. Hey Janet Cobb, God bless you. Glad that you join us. Me, Sean Daniels. We need a new, more compass authority to make America greater than it's ever been and ever was. Clara Winfield, God bless you. Amen. And again, uh, we want to invite you tomorrow at seven o'clock to come to the Gospel Missionary Church. 
for the voice of Louisville Civil Rights Meeting. And then also meet us on Friday at the Bishop's Table at 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock as we share with one another the preachers, uh, the police, the politicians, amen, all of us joining together. Darlene, amen, Patty, a big God bless you. Let's go to our phone line as we get ready for Central District this week. Amen. Our chief police is going to be speaking and uh, chatting with the preachers. Amen. I think Thursday about 2 o'clock, so the preachers are going to be chatting with the chief. And uh, you all be hearing about that. Let me go to line one real quick. Hi. You all talk at night. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, hey doing, doing very well. Yes, sir, hey, brother. Me, right, son. Right. Hey, I'm back from Las Vegas, man. Hey. I'm back from Las Vegas, man. And I just want to let everybody know that you can walk among the wickedness and don't be touched by the, the wickedness. And I'll tell you, I had never been to Las Vegas before. Yes, and I, I am, I am so, I'm so proud mm -hmm. to know that God was in my life that I, I, I only spent $20. <laughs> and I, 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 I didn't lie myself to keep cash here. And I, I didn't lie, I didn't lie to none of that craziness to, uh, the, 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 the flow on me. Hey, yes, sir. Good job, man. That's a good, you can be congratulated on that. Man, that's a great delation. Yeah, hey, you least should spend a hundred. I want to say to you, hey, I say to you that I got a, uh, I got reported. And man, I did a great, I mean, if you haven't heard my thing, it's all on my way up web page, there, there's all on Facebook, uh, how I was recorded. And I, I put it out there about a new moral, we need a new moral authority going into the new year. Yes, sir. We have to, we have to become the new moral authority. There was a time, and Doc, I know you know this, there was a time culturally, our demographic people was the moral authority in this country. Yes, Americans, yes. Europeans used to look at us and knew to do right because of us, because they saw how we were doing right, even in the even in the mess of us treating this mm -hmm. treatment. We were the best of the best. We yes. used to treat people right. We used to love when people right. They used to see how we took care of our family, and we used to be the moral authority. We must get back. back to and this is what. I want to, we got to take that attitude back. And Doc, I'd love for you to bring me on the airways and let's talk about that moral authority. Mm -hmm. We have to claim that because that's who we were. That's what our ancestors were in this country. Mm -hmm. We were the moral authority. We didn't turn out and try to be, we went out, this is why I got, we went out trying to be white. Yes, instead yes. Of being white. Yes, yes. We went out and, and allowed and we allowed that color construct to distract us. We got so proud in being revengeful to get black instead of being proud and being God. Or you didn't catch what I just said. We got proud being black instead of being proud or being godly. Or let's say it again. We got caught up in black instead of being proud of being God. Nah, God. Oh, go that's a good one. Godly. God needs to go back to being Godly. Yeah. Godly. Not black. It's not black. It's not what's that. It's Godly. Yes, sir. We gotta be proud. We gotta be proud to be Godly. Yes, sir. You hear me? Yes, sir. That's right. All right, well, I, I really, I want to definitely give you a man when uh, we get together because you have come up with something that's going to take at least a man a time to walk through because we got to change our mindset and get in there. Yeah, so listen, uh, let's set that up, see if we can do something this week. Is, is that all right with you? All right, I'll see you at the Bishop. Peter. All right, all right. ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, Brother Misha. I'm back from, please give him a hand. I'm glad to have him back. Hey. Back here, and uh, I wish I could go and just spend twenty dollars at Bell Tower, but I'm taking the bus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have another call? The phone number is five seven one one two four. Nikki, give us a call. Come by. Nikki is selling taco or taco salads from Nikki's. Uh, hey man, uh, this you know she knows how to do that. She just knows how that's she can cook. She can cook, man. Oh, man. And so I praise the Lord for you, I Nikki. Want taco salad. And uh, I enjoy, <laughs> I enjoy that taco uh, salad, amen. And so uh, y'all can come by tomorrow. Nikki gonna be at the church tomorrow, uh, and uh, pick up that taco uh, salad and something else. 
that I need for us to um, to do. Amen. I want to play a Christmas song, and I want to sing. Yeah, I'm singing. Uh, that's all right. That's all right. Amen. I'm, uh, we're going to play this Christmas song, but I just want to bring it up because this is the season. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's what I got on the new bus. Hey, but Bishop, Did you see I, want, new bus? I, I do want to say to the people, we have to be not naive and be aware that it is Christmas time. And when Christmas time come around, you know what? who comes out. The crooks, the robbers, the stealers, they're breaking your house, they're breaking your cars, they wait on you come out of the store. Please be careful. Please remember that it's Christmas time. When you're coming out of the store, shopping center, please have somebody with you that's protecting your women, the women and the kids because the vultures is out, the people's out, and we need to make sure we remember what time of year it is. We can't be just coming out of the mall with bags and bags and bags. They got people sitting out in the parking lot in their cars, waiting on people to come out of the, the malls, out of the stores. So be careful. Don't be naive. It's Christmas time. People are doing bad, and people out here is doing whatever it takes to get their Christmas. So be careful. Okay, thank you so much. Five four four seven nine nine nine. That's what I'm trying to get to the end because I tell you, we had some adults that took time, Sister Wanda. Amen. Uh, you was right there with the kids, taking care of Shirley and uh, um, uh, Carry On. Amen. With those kids on the on that bus and at the bowling alley, there with the police. That was definitely. Greatly appreciate it, and I just want to let us know. I'm trying to call you and let you know that we appreciate uh, Sister Wanda and what you did. Want to say to Paula, hey Paula, how you doing? Glad y'all in town. Looking forward to you all coming by, sharing with us in the service. Amen. We got uh, the Boston over to Monday night, Wednesday night. We have our midweek service, but glad you are in town all the way from California. What a great, great uh, blessing. I want to also say that we are continuously supporting uh, the Code Green. Code Green Auxiliary, we're uh, taking names in January. We will have your membership. They have our membership training for Code Green and our Code Green membership cards. Amen. We're starting the Code Green Auxiliary. What does Code Green mean? Cold Green said, Officer, you got to respect me. I'm going to respect you. But, Officer, you got to respect me. Now, when I say Cold Green, that means that I'm going to go by our code. And our code is that we don't run from you. And we don't fight you. And we don't argue with you. And we do keep our hands visible because we know you get scared when you can't see our hands. And we're going to try to understand what you're saying, but vice versa. When we ask you your name, officer, respect us enough to give you your name. If you want to ask me my address, tell me your badge number. Right. Amen. But you can Amen. ask you can that, ask though. Me. And Code Green, Code Green is written now. See, that's what, make, that's what makes this so powerful. Because what we're saying is not just what we're saying with our mouth. But it's written in the Code Green pamphlet. Right. This is the Code Green. Listen. Okay. Well, why I'm waiting on Brother Johnson... Hey, man, listen to this. Oh, this is your supervisor, Cole Green. Your life is an officer's life. If the officer is not uniform, you can ask oh, the officer or supervisor to the scene. The officer is required to treat you with respect. Return the respect even if you feel unjustly stopped. Just help them. Remember, respect first, object later. Hello, this is Bishop Dennis V. Lyons of Cole Green. Cole Green. Green. No one wants to hear this. License and registration, please. All right. You then I'll say that I was tripping up my head. You and the officer's safety. Show respect. Remain calm. Don't run or fight. Keep your hands visible at all times and let them know before you reach for anything. Remember, respect first, object later if you feel unjustly stopped. All right, but thank you so much. Hey, the number here is 571 1240. I just got a few more minutes. Hey, man, I had to take my bishop head off because the nurse said I was cute without my hat. <laughs> hey, man, I forgot it. And I've been wearing my hat ever since I left the funeral today. Yeah, but uh, when I seen 
Amen. The sister Glennis was trying to call me, and uh, she reminded me that that nurse says, Bishop, you look better without your bishop hat on. So, I'm so, so how you feel it. from last week to now? You feel a lot better? Man, I feel like James Brown since I got that new bus. <laughs> <laughs> Joan said, yeah, you feel like James Brown, you feel dead. <laughs> I don't feel dead. All right. Amen. Hey, Jeanette. Amen. But, uh, it was, I do, I do feel a lot better. That's what's up, it's uh, Getting that, you know, you got to stay focused. You got to be strong. You got to hold you on. You got to get some rest. You got to stay you. focused. And so, uh, what I uh, want to tell everybody, I just appreciate, I really appreciate uh, all that you've done. You know what? Lord, just look what we've done. Standing together, We're standing together. Baby, we will go Yes, Paul, I'm looking for y'all. Just like a tree standing out in the rain. Together we stand now. The body we fall back down. All right. United we stand now. Look at me. The body we fall. Working together, together, standing together. Oh. Come on, Ella Jean. We will go All right. Hey, Ava. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's almost time for us to get out of here. I know what, what you doing for the rest of the week. Oh uh, man, I'm a work. I'm a work and I, I'm working on Rod Neal's yes. uh, video. So be looking for Facebook yes. on Bishop yes. Lance page. Uh, our brother, uh, Pastor Ron Neal, uh, okay. working on this oh, video. Man. I just got uh, Pastor uh, Bishop uh, Linton. Uh, his video's done. It's on Bishop page and uh, check it out. Uh, Ron Neal, he spoke a good uh, sermon that day, and I'll be doing with it tonight. So be looking for it. Okay. Well, listen, y'all, we're getting down to the closing moments. I want to thank you, mm -hmm. Brother Misha, Ava, Amen, Bingham. So glad to uh, see you. And I want to also tell Pastor Bingham, we said hello, Reverend Crittenden. Amen, Alan Newberg, a big God bless you. To him and to all of our pastors. Let's get ready for the pastors conference. I mean, now the uh, uh, Central District. I just know Tuesday, I know I mean, Thursday, the chief of police is going to have a chat with the preachers at 2 o'clock. Is anybody invited? Amen. No. Uh -oh. No. No, this is, uh, this is just the preachers. Amen. Glad to see you. Amen. Listen, I'll be back tomorrow evening at 5.30 to give you more information. Y'all, I forget Jasper Williams of the G.C. Williams funeral home went to be with the Lord. Let's put our arms and our comfort around uh, that family. Also, the Wells family, the funeral services for one of the Wells is out there in Newburgh. It is going to be tomorrow at 12 at Shoemate. My very good friend, the family, the Moran family, Geneva. We definitely want to let you know that we're going to be with you. Amen. So keep that in mind. And again, I'll be looking forward to seeing you, girl. Amen. I ain't seen you in a long time. This is the bishop. We got to get out of here.